What's up, YouTube? Dark God back again with day 14 of the October Horror Movie Challenge. Uh, slow day today. I only got two films in, plus about four episodes of the show. It counts as four towards the total of 100. Uh, next couple days are all going to be slow days, so probably going to be short videos for the next couple that I pump out. Uh, let's get right into it, though. Film I, first one I watched was the film of the day for DVD Talk, and that was Blood on Satan's Claw. Um, interesting film from the 70s uh, about the influx of this like satanic... I don't even know what to say. Like, I guess a satanic cult in this uh, New England town, and they uh, it, it basically goes through the, like the kids of the town and like the teenagers of the town first, and just how like the town is dealing with everything. Not you know they don't really believe in their the, the town. The, the kids are like you know the one girl saying that the preacher um, uh, sexually assaulted her and everything. So it just it's weird. It, it it's not. I mean, I really liked it. I I thought it was a cool film. The way it's all set up, and everything is very well acted. Like even like the young kids and everything do good. It's not not too many young kids. Like they're like mid teenagers, late teenagers. Um, they do very good in it, and it's just kind of a uh, the pandemic of of Satanism in this village and everything. And it's it's always a cool play like that. Like all the time, like the witch, the like to see like that that pre um like pre I guess pre U S like. Christianity and Catholic, uh, Catholic Catholicism, um, and seeing it deal with Satanism because it's such a at that time it was such a, a a black and white thing of you know evil and good. So it's cool when they these movies are like that. Um, I just it, I feel like it's it's very well textured with like it has like this very good. I don't even know how to explain it. It's just it's very well done with the 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 religion themes and it's 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 a good like in. It's a good visual. Like you would see this when you watch this, you could see it like play out before you of of the good versus evil themes. It just I don't know. I, I liked it. It's good. It has some cool moments. Uh, a couple crazy moments. Um, you know, there's a rape scene and everything. Uh, there's a couple interesting moments. A lot of cool locales. Like they, they like the old like. There's this old building they film in that one scene. It's just pretty well done. Um, I'd give it a six and a half out of ten. I really liked it. It's just that. It's it's one of those movies like you see the title and the cover doesn't really look good. It, you know you see it on Amazon Prime and you don't think it's gonna be anything. And actually was surprisingly decent. So I, I I really did like that. Second film I watched was um, it's a rewatch. It's a film I really like. That's the Fearless Vampire Killers, uh, directed by Roman Polanski. The, the movie itself, I mean, it's more comedy than horror. Like it has horror elements. Obviously, it's all about vampires. But there's so much comedy in this movie, and it it all comes off perfectly timed like everything like every joke hits perfectly they're all like little jokes like it's not beat you over the head like comedy it's just these subtle jokes the you know situations that are weird for them and you know there's some slight gags and everything but nothing like like you could watch that film and not realize it's a comedy because it is dark still with the vampires and everything um the i posted on my facebook the most surreal thing about watching feel vampire killers is a Seeing Sharon Tate and knowing what happens to her in two years, and B seeing Roman Polanski and knowing what he goes does for the rest of his life, so it's it's weird to see them because this is the movie that's supposed to that they met on and everything, that they got married. So this is the movie that basically like set up. This is the the fork in the road movie. You know the moment in their lives. This is the where you go A or B. You know if they didn't meet, who knows what would have happened? If Sharon Tate would still be alive, Roman Polanski wouldn't have been, you know. A sexual abuser ostracized to, to Poland and just it, it's weird to see you know that now seeing that film and, and knowing what comes from this so all of it feels vampire kills easily seven out of ten movie just it's such a good movie it's just like it's one of those things like you don't want Roman Polanski to be good in it like you don't want to cheer for Roman Polanski because of who he is as a human being but you do end up liking what he does because the movie is, is very well made um, I believe this might be his first full-on um, English film. Like, before this, I think he did a couple of horror films, but they're uh, uh, in Polish language and everything. So I think, th I'm pretty sure this was his first uh, English-based, American-based film. And, um, I mean, it, it's it's an excellent first film to, to do that on, because it just it really is a good movie. 7 out of 10, easy, any day. Uh, great rewatch, easy rewatch. The shows I watched, actually, I'm just going to get into a little bit of them. I watched the first four episodes of uh, The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. And uh, I, I like the original Haunting. I think the original from the 
50s, late 50s, early 60s, is really good. I kind of like the one from 99 because it's a guilty pleasure for me. I saw it in the movie theaters when I was like 18 years old. So I always had a, a kind of guilty pleasure like about that. The first four episodes of Haunting Hill House, it's the storyline is, I mean, you, if you know those two films, you catch so many little Easter eggs. You know, they, they show you this uh, scene at the, the, um, at the fireplace, they show you the stairwell. You know, they, you, you see a lot of things that, there's a lot of the cherubs all around the house. Uh, you, a lot of things you would catch from both movies and everything, and, and that's cool because it's fan service for those people who've seen those films. Also, it, it's just a very well done show. Like the backstory, going into the character's backstory each time, each character is just like layered with story, and it's it's cool how like the kids are all introduced, and then each episode uh, sticks with one kid and shows like basically what they've done with their life since uh, they left the Hill House and everything. And it, it's all setting up, obviously. Like, like I said, I'm only four episodes in, so I don't know what happens after. But you can tell it's setting up that they're going to end up having to go back to the house. Something happens in the first episode that is kind of bringing them all together because they kind of all disperse. Like, they talk to each other and everything, but they each have their own lives. So you, you could tell, like, what it's setting up for. Um, it's There's nothing that's really, like, overly scary. Like, there's a couple creepy scenes. Uh, the fourth episode, there was a scene that I actually, well, like, like I had to say, wow, like, damn, that was pretty cool. Um it, it just was something different. I didn't expect it. Like it, it goes back to the fan service of watching the previous ones, but they just take a different take on it. And it, it was pretty cool how they did it. So uh, I'm not going to give a rating because it, it's not, I'm, not, I'm not done with the season, but it's just something pretty cool. It, a good show. I mean, Netflix, I mean, killed it with their show. So this is not uh, anything different. This is an excellent show. So uh, easy day. Like I said, only got uh, two movies and four episodes of a show in. So uh, let's see, that's day... What day am I on? Uh, I think I'm on 14. So I got 17 more to go. I'm going to crank these out. Should be fun. Until then, I'll catch you on the flip side.